Hi, good people. It's Amy from Saber Salvage Scent, and I hope this finds you doing really well. Um, today, I thought I would talk to you about the, I would say, most rare or treasured perfumes in my collection. For those of you who are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you enjoy this video or content, I hope that you'll click the red subscribe button so that we can stay in touch and that you'll get notifications when I post videos. For those of you returning, thank you so much for supporting me, encouraging me, etc. So um, I thought it would be fun. I, those of us who are really into perfume, uh, most of us I would say love watching other people's collection videos. Um, I'm going to do a video later in the week that focuses on how I store my collection and my collection as a whole. Um, but I thought it would be fun to start with um, a video that uh, kind of explores the most rare perfumes in my collection. How do I define rare? Um, in my case, I would say often it's age, how old they are. Um, even, even more often probably it is if they've been discontinued. So easy or sorry, they're no longer easy to get. They're hard to get. Um, and then I would say there are a few that I believe will probably be discontinued or have been recently or um, have changed formulations, things like that. As far as value, you'll see everything here from things that are probably highly um, coveted and worth I don't know, three to five hundred dollars to things that probably have very little or small value, but have great um, value to me. So I'm going to kind of start in chronological order. I'm going to go from the oldest relatively um, to the newest. I'm going to tell you the release dates for the really old ones. Um, but as I get into the newer ones, not as much. Um, I'm not going to go into every note. I'm going to basically tell you what a little bit about what they smell like or what's important I think about them. But definitely encourage you to do your own research or ask me questions too if there's something that you want to know more about. On that note, I would love to um, know and I would love for you to think about as I'm talking through this video, um, what are the things that are most coveted in your collection and or things that you don't have in your collection that you're looking for? I would just love to hear a little bit about it. Feel free, feel free to post comments down below. All right, so starting with some of the oldest scents, I'm gonna be referring to notes because these are there's a lot of perfumes. I would say I have about 35 or 36 here to talk with you about. Um, one of my oldest scents or perfumes is an old bottle of um, Chanel number 22, the Eau de Cologne. So some of these, I don't know exactly when this bottle was produced, so I'm gonna tell you about the first release date. I'm gonna estimate how the bottle is. Um, this was first released in 1922. Um, it's a really, I would say like aldehydic scent. It definitely has um, some incense. It, um, what else do I get from this? I smell vetiver in this as well. Um, this to me does not smell exactly like number five. And the reason I say that is some other scents kind of do. Um, but this I would say is probably, probably uh, 30s, 40s. Um, I will say um, just, especially if it's help, if it helps to inspire other collectors. Um, I am known for being very frugal spent a lot of my time in antique stores growing up in thrift shops and junk stores. Um, so I know how to find a good deal. Um, while these things uh, bring these prices now, most of these things I have paid little for. Um, and I think I paid, I don't know, 20 or $30 for this. And I think it is worth somewhere between 125 and $200 um, for this age bottle. Really great. Okay. Next are a few from um, Lon Von. One is, um, let's see, what is the oldest one? I have uh, an old bottle, large bottle of Arpege. Um, this was an incredible find um, online. Somebody just didn't know what it was worth. Um, I think I paid 30 for this. Um, this was first released in, I think, 1927. Um, this also has a fair amount of vetiver in it. Um, very floral, 
definitely some leather though too. It's interesting. Um, I get aldehydes too. And um, this ranges, according to my research from, gosh, probably 150 to 200, something like that. Um, so really old bottle, beautiful. Um, another interesting old bottle um, is, and I think this is way more rare than even the Arpege. This is uh, Lanvin Scandal. And this was first produced, I believe in 1931. This uh, you can find from anywhere from 250 to $500 online. Um, and honestly, I only see a bottle or two every time I look it up. It's very rare in comparison. Something really cool to see is the label on the back shows a zip code of four digits, just to give you an idea of how old it is. Really old. Um, and uh, yeah, this is beautiful. I love this uh, even more than Arpege. It, it also has kind of a leathery, aldehydic feel. Um, mm, this to me today would be marketed toward men. Um, I love it. This also has, did I say it has vetiver? It has a leathery feel. Um, this is super dry compared to Arpege though. Really dry. It almost reminds me a little of like Sycamore, Chanel Sycamore. Anyways, um, Scandal by Lanvin. Really great. Oh, and this was a killer find. I went into an antique store one day with my sister and the woman was like, how about $5? <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, tops of some of the Lanvin um, bottles is a um, kind of depiction of Jean Lanvin and her daughter, I believe, dancing. Really cool. Okay, next, let me see. Um, this, I, I could not tell you, you know, it's probably not worth a ton, maybe $50. I need to find it. Um, this is a perfume called Silent Night. Um, I only see it pop up online every once in a great while. Um, it appears to have been released in 1945. Um, you can find it for like 40 to $50, but the reason it's really special to me is it's been long discontinued, it's hard to find, and more importantly to me, um, it is one of the most beautiful carnation scents. Oh my gosh, so, so, so beautiful. Um, really, really carnation-y, powdery, gorgeous thing. Love it. Um, okay. Sorry, kind of went out of order here as far as chronology. Um, next would be, um, this is really cool. This I, I cannot estimate a value on, but my wonderful friend Lynn sent me this, and I need to find your letter, Lynn, because I know that you told me a little more about it. This is a wooden little container of solid, I believe solid perfume of Habanita, so Molinar, it's Habanita. I just think this is such a little treasure. It's such a cool, like, fetishy thing, and you can still smell the scent inside. It's so cool. Um, so to me, I have no idea the value, but this is priceless to me because it's so cool. It is just, you can see probably Habanita there. Um, really, really cool. Thank you, Lynn, super special. Um, next, let's see. I have um, a couple of vintage Shalimar perfumes. Um, it's hard for me to estimate how much these are because it, I can't tell you for sure if these are extrait or perfume. Either way, um, they're really old, resinous. The bottles are really gorgeous. This one you can see still has the tie. Um, this one is a little smaller. Each of these I paid $5 for. They usually go, I would say, anywhere from oh, 50 to 100 bucks, depending on how old, how full, that kind of thing, and just such beautiful bottles. Um, this is not the exact box that either of them came in, but this is a really cool old Shalimar box as well. Um, sticking with Guerlain for a little bit. Um, next, I would say uh, I have an older bottle. I'm guessing this is probably from the 70s or 80s of Lair Blue that comes in this canister. Ugh, it's so, 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 so good. Um, this, I would say, ranges probably from $75 to $125. 
Um, I think I paid about 25, um, probably 10 years ago plus online. I just love the canisters and the old formulation of Lair Blue is great. Another kind of a few more rarities uh, is a Eau de Cologne bottle of Shalimar. This I think originally is, God, I think it's eight to 12 ounces. I can't remember. It's huge. Um, the formulation is so great. It definitely has a bit more of a sparkling eau de toilette quality, but because of its age, when this dries down, it really has a beautiful resinous powdery quality too. Um, and these are just hard to find in really interesting bottles. So I would say this probably ranges in value um, somewhere from, I don't know, like, I don't know, probably 75 to 100, something like that. So Shalimar de Cologne, really cool old bottle. And my guess is from, I don't know, 70s as a guess. Um, not impossible to find, but a wonderful formulation is an old, this old bottle of Samsara Eau de Toilette. Um, my guess is this is uh, from the 90s and ranges in value from 50 to $100. Um, just a really nice, old soft formulation, not quite as bright as the current perfume, but really, really good. And this would put most modern day perfumes to shame as far as strength, really nice. And while this is not in a fancy bottle, um, this is an older formulation of Shamad by Guerlain, um, which is a beautiful powdery floral scent. One of my favorites, it doesn't get talked about enough. Um, and believe it or not, just based on the age of this, I think it was first released in the um, 89 or 90, something like that. But my guess is this is worth 75 to 100 based on um, its older formulation. I also have one of the old Shamad bottles, I should have brought it out, that looks like a heart with an arrow through it. Um, and I've thought about putting this in the old bottle. I don't know if, you know, collectors frown upon such a thing, but I think it would be great to have this old formulation in the old bottle. Um, just love the scent, hardly anybody talks about it. Okay, next. Um, <laughs> I just thought this was quirky and interesting. This is from a friend of mine, Matt, thank you. Um, this is called Friendship Garden, and it was made by Schulten, which is a company that made Old Spice. Um, I can't find too, too much about it. It first came out in 1939. Um, it is what I would call a woody floral. Um, and it's just, I've only seen a bottle a few times online. It definitely smells like your grandmother's perfume. I'm just going to be honest. And I don't find, I don't think I'm, you know, in the scheme of things, terribly ageist. Um, but this definitely smells um, to me like something that, you know, my aunties would have worn when I was really little. Um, and I just think the bottle's really beautiful. All right. Next, um, gosh, this was one of the first loves of mine. Um, and actually when I first got this perfume, I was not ready. It was so, so strong and um, kind of gender bending and, and out of my league. And then I learned to love it over the years. This is um, this is bath oil actually by Nikki de saint Paul. Her perfume and bath oils unfortunately have been discontinued. I bought this at only, I think, probably $20, um, probably about mm, 15 or so years ago, I'm guessing. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the bath oil, and I and um, my wonderful friend Lynn just sent me recently the cologne, which is incredible. Both of these now are collect highly collectible. They're discontinued, and they range from anywhere from $150 to $200 online. So I feel really, really, really lucky to have these. And I do wear them because, you know, everybody's different, but I feel like perfume is to be worn. Same with art. It's to be appreciated, and yeah, um, love them both. Oh, and by the way, just the scent. Super foresty. Reminds me a lot of Halston, if you're familiar. Maybe even um, Cabochard. Very oak mossy, but even more, I would say, foresty than those other perfumes. Really, really just phenomenally beautiful. Um, next. Oh, this was like a holy grail. I looked for this for probably 10 years. Um, this is Lanvin's Claire de Jour. Light of day. 
Um, it is, let's see, it was released in 1983. And the reason that I was looking for it left and right for the longest time is because um, I am in love with the scent of black locust. I once was out with friends and smelled um, black locust trees in bloom. Often where I live in Ohio, um, they use, um, or honey is made with black locust flowers sometimes. Um, and the scent in the air that day, I actually bought black locust derivative honey. And my friend who is really um, into botany, et cetera, um, said, oh, that, that's what you can smell blooming in the air right now. And so I went looking for a perfume and there's very few of them. And this one was discontinued, hard to find. Um, this ranges in price, I would say somewhere between, I don't know, 60 and a hundred dollars, but it's just so rare to me. And it's so interesting, beautiful, powdery. It's like a honeyed like scent. Um, so Lan Vun's Claire de Jour, amazing, amazing, beautiful thing. So happy to find it. Really was hard to find, honestly. Um, next, I would say this was a, um, released probably in like the early 90s. This is opium, but it is a flanker called Secret de Parfum. And one, I bought it because I am obsessed with chinoiserie and this bottle is ridiculous it's so beautiful but i love the scent too i really love kind of ambers and like what people called oriental scents when i was growing up um it smells a lot like you know like fancy times from for the grown folks who were uh my ancestors and um i love this version of opium because it's softer and to me a little more vanilla and gourmand just a beautiful thing. Um, this ranges in price now anywhere from $125 to $200, I would say, online. So Opium Secret de Parfum. Um, first released in 1993 is um, YSL's, are you saying Laurent's Champagne? Um, so this has become another name now. I think it's, is it Ivris? I'm not sure how to say it. Please let me know if you know. Um, as you can see, this even looks like a champagne bottle and it hints at what it smells like. It really smells, it does have that sparkling kind of aldehydic quality like champagne, deeply, deeply focused on stone fruit. I get a lot of apricot from this. It is so gorgeous. This was kind of by mistake. I honestly didn't know much about this perfume and I saw it in an antique store. This was only $10. I purchased it just thinking for $10, it'll be great. And then um, I wore it and fell in love. And then I've learned since that this ranges anywhere from $150 to $300 a bottle because it's been discontinued, reformulated under another name and it's not quite as good anymore. So really, really phenomenal. YSL's Champagne or Champagne. Um, next is, let's see. Oh, and by the way, um, Sophia Grossman made this. So, you know, I just love her. Um, next is, let's see, um, Versace's Blonde. This was one of my first loves. I wore this when I was, I think in early college. This is such a gorgeous, buttery white floral. It's mostly, I get tuberose from it, but many there's many other things in the composition, but it just has got this honey, buttery feel. Um, this is the Extra de Parfum. This is discontinued. Um, I believe if I didn't say that this came in a night, this came out in 1995, and these bottles range anywhere from from 85 to 125 dollars. Um, just a beautiful thing. Um, next, we get into a couple, um, a few Guerlain's. Actually, this is Guerlain's Mahora, which I believe is discontinued. This is again a buttery. Uh, this in this case, yellow and white floral. Um, really, really gorgeous. This ranges in price from, I don't know, it's around $75, I would say for one ounce. Um, and just, you know, the bottle alone is great. This is relatively new to my collection. <clears throat> okay. That was, if I didn't say it came out in 2000 and I'll, I'm going to go to a few more Guerlain's in a moment. Another scent released around that time. Where is it? is um, Gucci 2. This is one of my favorite. It is, I would call it a fruity floral. I'd also call it slightly aquatic or ozonic. 
it's rare for me to like that kind of combo. This is one of my first loves. Um, this came out, let's see, in <clears throat> 2004. Um, this range is at price now, crazy prices it's going for because it's discontinued anywhere from like 150 to $200. Um, but it's just perfect for what it is. Um, and for some reason, I always say I love to wear this around water. Like if I'm going swimming, it's just beautiful for that. If you're familiar with Sarah Jessica Parker's Lovely, while it doesn't have the same elements, it's got the same quality in that it's light, but somehow people smell it on you. It's refreshing and it's a combination of a lot of things. It's got a tiny bit of muskiness, but mostly I would say a really nice fruity floral aquatic. Gucci too. Sadly discontinued. I don't know why, because I know a few people who really, really, really love it. Um, next is my favorite perfume of all time, Caron's Eau de Reglisse. Um, in other words, licorice, kind of like water. Um, this to me smells like lemon verbena tea with a hint of licorice. Um, it is just phenomenal. I love it year round, but it's especially good in the heat. I think it smells great on anybody and no matter whether at the gender spectrum, this has been discontinued. It's still somewhat affordable. You can find bottles as affordably as $60, but it's discontinued. I have backups. I don't ever want to be without it. It's super special. Nobody ever talks about it. I don't understand. It's so good. Okay, next um, would be a couple by Guerlain's uh, Aqua Allegoria line. The first is um, Anicia Bella. So it's got an anise scent, but I think what's great about this, I love black licorice and anise. I know it's not for everybody, but this is a really fresh, I find a lot of scents like hypnotic poison would be one that have um, licorice or anise have a gourmand feel or a heavy or a sweet, like a cakey feel. This is not, it's bright um, like a lot of the aqua allegorias are. Um, and really, really beautiful. This range is in price now. It's it's discontinued for some time. Um, I think this was released like in the early 2000s and it ranges in price from like 70 to 100. Um, but it's just really special because I think it's, it's hard to find. Another one that's been discontinued that I love is Angelique Lilas. So again, Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria line. It does smell like lilac, which is one of my favorite scents, and I think it's hard to do well. Um, and the Angelique gives it like a dry, almost papery quality to me, but really interesting, almost I would say out of the box or strange, but in the best of ways, it's not your typical lilac, I would say. Um, this ranges in price from like, I wanna say 60 to 100, something like that, if you can find it. It's harder to find. Um, let's see, next. Okay, I'm gonna go through this last batch kind of quickly because these are in the newer scents. Um, this was one of my first loves, Bulgari's Jasmine Noir. I always say when a lot of things are called noir these days that do not have darker noir qualities, this really does. It is Jasmine, but with kind of like a heavy gourmand, ambery feel, incense, gorgeous thing. Sadly discontinued, I do not know why. Um, this range is in price now from 150 to $200 and I do have a backup because I just don't ever want to be without it. Um, next is, and kind of in an interesting same noir quality and bottle, this is Lolita Lempica Eau de Minuet, I think Midnight, but it's the couture version. The way you know the couture is it's got these leaves. Um, this is ridiculously expensive. It's been um, discontinued. You only see one online once in a great while and it ranges from $150 to $250. It is kind of like what I would call the typical Lolita Lamp Lampica scent of licorice, but definitely with more incense, amber, um, rich, ripe, beautiful, deep, dark, gorgeous thing. Sadly, gone. Um, all right. Next, I'm not sure when this was released, and some of you might laugh at this because it was not, it did not start as an expensive perfume, but I think it's incredible. I was a person who used to love the old formulations of Dior Addict. I love the um, smoky, incense vanillic quality that almost smelled like liquor to me. It just was like ambery, rich, beautiful. 
it's been discontinued or reformulated so many times it doesn't smell like what it used to smell like but this oddity does this is called xoxo heartbeat it's in the shape of a heart it used to be touted as a cheap alternative to the original dior it's no longer cheap because it's so good and it's um out of commission so the price is now this used to be like a ten dollar bottle of perfume oh my god it's so good if you like the original attic though you might consider buying it you can find it from 50 to 100 dollars, but it is totally gorgeous um xoxo heartbeat all right next really special very hard to find there is a series of perfumes made by isabel toledo the designer may she rest in peace um these were produced in i think 2015 for lane bryant so they did not get a lot of attention i however saw these and man i wish i would have bought more of them there were a few other perfumes they were all interesting but my favorite was called um moonflower or moon orchid i'm sorry and you can see it has this really beautiful kind of asian feel um, this is essentially like a spicy floral amber, um, really, really beautiful. And there were only a few made, they were discontinued quickly and then she passed away. And so the scents go for anywhere from 200 to $350 and it's just beautiful. I should talk about this more and wear it more. So this is Moon Orchid by Isabel Toledo. Um, Another scent that has kind of a similar feel, but a little more gourmand and almondy, is a scent that was made by Body Shop. And I have never heard anybody talk about it, so I am guessing at how it is pronounced. But my guess is based on the um, place in Africa called the Niger. I believe this would be Nigeritella, N-I-G-E-R-T-E-L-L-A. It smells a lot like hypnotic poison and what else maybe something a bit more ambery had a baby yeah um this came when it first came out it was a cheapie and you could find it at, at like tj maxx for like ten dollars now it's just continued it ranges in price from 50 on up but it is excellent i have the body wash i have the cream i absolutely love this stuff gorgeous um okay then I've probably got about 10 more that are just newer ones, but they're either discontinued or I think soon to be dis discontinued. One of my favorite desert island scents is um, a beautiful gourmand carnation, and it is made by a comp company called Royal Pothic. Some of you might know that name because they make a line or they sell their line in anthropology. Sometimes you can even find them in TJ Maxx. This, however, is called Noble Carnation, and it's been long discontinued. It recently popped up back on their website a few years ago and people were writing me and saying, oh my gosh, it's for sale again. And like, as soon as it popped up, came right back off. So I'm not sure what the deal is, but it is such a gorgeous, gourmand, sweet, clovey, cinnamony carnation, but sweet, just beautiful. Um, I think I paid $60 for this. And the last time I saw it when it was discontinued, um, it was for sale for like $200 online. So gorgeous thing really happy to have it um a lot of you will know the name ganache parfums uh that was a shop that was or a niche line that was dedicated to like mostly gourmands um a lot of people will know um i think a lemon eclair scent was really popular a few of their coffee scents they did not do well on me but they did a whole line of scents that were based on soda pop that had all these like the sparkling quality and two of the scents I'm freaking crazy about. Both have been discontinued. The first is ginger ale. I found a backup bottle recently. I'm so glad. So the two of them should rest the last of my life. But I went through this in one summer. That's how much I wore it. Um, it truly smells like Werner's ginger ale if you've ever had it. It is so good. Sparkling, uplifting, beautiful. Um, and... I think, by the way, the shop has opened and closed literally like six times, I feel like at least. Um, and I believe that it's being, um, I think he's combining sources with another perfumer, another house, but they're not making these scents anymore regardless. So highly coveted. The other one I love from them, all of them from the Soda Pop line I loved. Um, there was one called Yankee Dollar that was like cola. And then there was one that was orange pop, but this is the red pop one. And this is the one I'm, the other one I'm totally crazy about. I have never seen a second bottle for sale. 
if you've ever smelled red cream soda and red cherry soda, it's like a combination of the two. So it's got that powdery, almost violety quality, um, but smells a little like cherry and a little like cream soda. Love this thing, just love it. And uh, I can't, I think I paid only 30 bucks a piece for these when I purchased them originally, but I'm sure they'd be expensive and highly coveted now. Um, okay, another favorite scent that's recent but has gone out of production. This is a gift by my friend Autumn. Thank you so much, Autumn. This is one of my favorite scents. This is uh, Maison Margiela's replicas line. Um, this is Fun Fair Evening. This smells like it has a little bit of anise, which is one of my favorite things, or licorice. This is supposed to be something you would smell on the boardwalk at a fun fair. So you're gonna smell licorice, you're gonna get funnel cakes, you're actually gonna get a little sea air as well, um, and maybe a little powdered sugar and like caramel. All of those things combined, it's strangely light for a gourmand. You can wear it in the summer, but it's so unique and bizarre, and it's got that anise smell that I just love. So Fun Fair Evening by Replica, out of commission. You can still find bottles from 100 to 100 to $200, but getting harder to find. Really, really happy to have a bottle. Um, I just heard recently that um, this scent is going out of production. I think my friend Selena told me about it, and she's the first one that turned me on to this. This is Aramis's Calligraphy Rose. Y'all, this is one of the best rose scents I've ever smelled. It is kind of a Middle Eastern take on rose. Syrupy, jammy, definitely got like a little wood or oud and incense. And it's just, it is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever smelled. You can still find bottles from 60 to 70 to 100, let's say. And I'm telling you, if this sounds like something you would like, I would grab it because I don't think they're making it anymore and it's phenomenal. They are making, I think, the two other scents in this line. Um, another scent that has been, I believe, recently discontinued. It's come back, but then I think it's fallen off again, is Commodities Tonka. I'm a Tonka lover. For those of you who don't know Tonka, it's very similar to um, vanilla, but I think has a bit more of a powdery incense quality. And this is the perfect Tonka scent. It is super powdery, but so gorgeous. It has a little bit of a fougere quality, almost like a mem men's barbershop scent but also has a sweetness too. So it's just really interesting, kind of an oddball. I love it. You can still find bottles for 70 to 100 bucks, but out of commission. So I think not long for this earth, sadly. Um, just a few more. This is a still, I found this just a year ago as a cheapie in um, TG Maxx, but it's out of production now and going up in price. And I just think it's really special. This is called Evelyn Rose. It's by Crabtree and Evelyn. Um, it is a rose with a bit of an incense quality. It's somehow light. It kind of reminds me a little of Baccarat Rouge in that like light, soft, powdery, but you can smell it quality, but with a little rose. Um, I think I only paid $7 for this, but it's climbing in price and I think it's out of commission. It's really awesome though. If you like rose, look for it. All right, this is another one that it's just been discontinued and it actually can be fine cheaply, but I think it's not long for this earth and it's freaking awesome. This is Truly Gracious by Kate Spade. It smells like fresh cut grass. That's it, but it's perfect. So good. I think I found it for 25 bucks, 20, 25 at TJ Maxx, but not long for this earth. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about two from niche houses that I really love. One from um, Sucre Bay. This is called Byzantine. This has just been re um, discontinued. It's the best smoky tea scent. Oh, it's so good. Smoky tea, uh, maybe with a little citrus. It's phenomenal. Sometimes they'll take things off their site and put them back. So if it sounds like your cup of tea, haha, I would look for it. And then this was a scent by Alchemia that was made just as a kind of, I forget, like a little, an experimental project. I think that was only made for what one season. And then I asked them if they would bottle more as it was being discontinued. This is their 2020 Lunar New Year scent. It smells like a fresh baked fortune cookie. It is awesome. I own multiples. Um, if that sounds like something you like, look at their site because they have some other scents that are somewhat similar in a cookie, tea, slightly spicy, vanilla kind of way. Um, so I also have um, 
another scent in the mail right now that I'll talk to you about another time, but it is Crown Perfumery's Stephanotis. I smelled it like, I don't know, 20 years ago, fell in love with it. It was discontinued, super expensive, almost impossible to find. I see one pop up online every few years. It's usually ridiculously expensive. I found a really good price, so that's on, in the mail to me. Um, and I would say there's, I'm sure some in the Solstice Scents line, you all know I'm obsessed with that indie house. If you've watched this channel before, there are a few, I think one is called Black Mallow that might be being discontinued. I have to kind of keep my eye out. I had, think I have a few scents that, that you know, um, might not be forever, but um, I cherish that whole line, all of Solstice Scents. Like there's not one that I don't love really that I own. Um, so, in a small batch perfumery house, those, you know, could be at risk, I'm sure. But that is really, those are the the parts or the perfumes in my collection that I think are either rare, um, coveted, expensive, or just a value to me. Um, I would love to hear from you again, what things are you think most coveted or perhaps valuable in your collection. It doesn't have to be by the price. It could be by based on your, um, your memory or something that's hard to find or sentimental, I would love to hear it. Um, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.